Jem, I think you're wrong. In fact, I think the comic fam may be wrong. Let's get into this. Well, it looks like you might have the unpopular opinion there, Tom, but that's number one on the list. Before we get there, make sure to hit that like, make sure you're subscribed, and hit it with number 10. Number 10 on the list, Strange Worlds number four. This came out in 1951. Classic Golden Age sci-fi cover, Wally Wood goodness. Three different record-breaking cells proving that the Golden Age comic books aren't as affected by the lulls, this adjustment period that we're currently in. Take a look at these, 2.5, selling for 340 back in 2020, up 19% selling for 405. The 6.5, selling for 1700, is up 91% selling for 3250. And last but not least, we have a record setting 9.0, which went for $21,600, hot damn. Almost $22,000, but that 9.0 is not only a record setter, it's the only 9.0 on the census and it's the highest graded. This right here proves that Golden Age comics are clearly safer, if not just because of the dope art and how classic they are, because of the scarcity. Above an 8.0, there are only five copies that exist, and that 9.0 was one of them. Jam hit him with some of the best movie news and potential comic spec that we've gotten in a long time. Number nine on the list, we have House of Secrets 92, the first appearance of Swamp Thing, who's been a mainstay on this list ever since James Gunn announcement in January about the upcoming film. Bernie Wrights and Goodness classic blue chip DC comic has been on the rise since the start of the year, and it's only gone up. We have a 5.0 selling for $1,349, up 19% when you compare it over the recent 12 month average. The 8.0 for 3360 right now, 9% over its recent 12 month average, and the 9.4, quite pricey, $14,400 for an increase of 3%. And yes, it's on the rise, but the movie isn't going to come out for quite a long time considering the writer's strike as well as the potential Screen Actors Guild strike. But director James Mangold, who just got done doing his press surrounding the recent flop which is Indiana Jones, is now talking about Swamp Thing for the first time. I know some fans out there have to have lost faith in James Mangold after what happened with Indiana Jones, but keep in mind, he did direct Logan, and he seems to be really excited about Swamp Thing. In this long quote, it was basically his idea that he brought to James Gunn, and check out what he's saying about the tone of the film. The idea of making kind of almost a kind of noir mystery horror film about a guy who wakes up um, and he's this thing. How did I get here? And who did this to me? I'm envisioning kind of a horror noir film following a creature that can't be seen trying to piece together from fragments of memory what happened and who did it. And none of this runs counter, obviously, to the Len Wein and, and Bernie Wrightson and all the yeah. great work that went on, um, which was, which I mean, it's not like I, I'm just framing it up in yes. a kind of new movie context. But that's all they were exploring um, in these comics, and, and so beautifully. Clearly giving what not just readers and fans of Swamp Thing want, but collectors as well. Not straying away from the source material is usually a good sign. Moving on to number eight, we have Amazing Spider-Man issue 41. Again, the first appearance of the Rhino riding high off that Craven trailer. Did you know that one of the original villains that was slated to be featured in the first Black Panther movie was actually Craven. Early on, director Ryan Coogler mentioned wanting to use Craven in the film, but when he found out about the rights and Sony, he decided to scrap it and go with someone else. Could you imagine if Craven was in Black Panther? I think people would just be waiting around the entire time, not focused on the world of Wakanda and the lore, but waiting for like Spider-Man to show up, much like the Craven movie that's coming out soon, which is also causing multiple record-breaking sales and a lot of books to spike up on multiple lists. The 5.0 is up 1% from its 12-month average, selling for $460. The 5.5 is up 6%, and the 6.0 is up 20%, selling for $649. And then we got a record breaker, an 8.5, which sold for $2,170 last year, up 11%, selling for $2,400. Rhino's spiking this book because it's going to be featured as an antagonist in the Craven movie, but there are so many other keys spiking because of this Sony villains universe that's being created. Keep track of them all and get updates along the way by downloading Key Collector Comics, the best comic app in existence, hands down. You support the show by using code TOM101 to unlock a free two-week subscription of the app. Catalog your comic books, get suggested pricing, and so much more. You actually can sort all runs by just key 
key issues. So you can focus in on the ones that are actually worth money, but you also can toggle that off and see every comic book that exists. They just had an update of 400,000 comics to the app. That's a lot of comics. Number seven on the list is Ultimate Fallout issue number four, the first appearance of Miles Morales. The 9.2 sold for 631, an increase of 19% when you compare it over the recent 12-month average. And there were three additional copies in that grade that outperformed that average this past week. The 9.4 sold for $600 for an increase of 7%. The 9.6 sold for $735 for an increase of 1%. And the 9.8 hit 1982, which is an increase of 1% when you compare it over the recent 12-month average. But that 12 month is officially under 2k and this book has broken 2k numerous times this very year what's going on this is the king of modern age spec books it's one of the books that started this very video series not only did we have the miles morales in the spider-verse animated films we also have amy pascal telling variety that a live action movie is in the works Demand is extremely high for this comic book not to mention donald glover being featured in the animation live action all exciting things. However, the supply is indeed going up. Since we chatted about this book last, last week when this book hit number two on the Hot 10, there's been 33 copies added to the CGC census, 17 of which graded at a 9.8, nine of which graded at a 9.6. That's a lot of new copies in high grade in just one week. The 9.6 just sold for 695, where its all-time record high was 2400. The 9.8, we just saw a sale of 1800 and the record high for that was $4,500 April of last year. Supply goes up, demand is high, and the book is more affordable now than it's been in years. What do you think? Are you buying this book? Are you starting to get FOMO? Well, while you ponder that, let's talk about Conan at number six. We have the first appearance in 1970, issue number one to discuss, and so many copies are trending higher than their 12-month average. The 5.5 is up 19%. The 6.0 is up 14%. The 6.5 is up 5%. The 7.5 is up 2%. And the 8.0 is up 8%. You can get an 8.0 for 6.29 right now. And this book is a classic Bronze Age key. And most Bronze Age key number ones at this high grade are trending over $1,000. It's pretty affordable when you consider it. An 8.5 just sold for $638 and a 9.0 sold for $900. A 9.0 Bronze Age key for under $1,000. We got a Red Sonja movie that filmed. Not sure what they're doing with it yet. And we have Titan Comics purchasing the rights from Marvel and printing issue number one comes out July 26. Titan, well done. You guys went all out on the covers. Take a look at this cover A by Dan Panosian, but the cover C by Archer is fantastic. There's a retro variant. And of course, my favorite, cover E, done by the king of negative space, Mike Mignola, and cover F, channeling his Frank Frazetta, we have an EM Geist variant. Well done. I'm not even a huge fan of Conan, but I dig those covers. Moving on to number five on the list, we've got Wolverine issue number one from the Frank Miller classic miniseries. First Wolverine solo story, a book that made it on the Q2 Hot 10 list, like the overall coverage of three months collectively. This book is one of the hottest in the world, and it's back on the list this week. Is it because of Deadpool 3? Absolutely. Hugh Jackman, of course. Mutant spec? Excellent. Wolverine spec? Seems safe. Last week, we found out about Ben Affleck being seen on the Deadpool 3 set, which was making people think that we were going to possibly see a reprisal of the Daredevil role. Well, the good news keeps flowing, if that's good news. I digress. Elizabeth Olsen may be part of this movie, considering her ties as a mutant in her portrayal as Scarlet Witch. Owen Wilson from the TVA? A possible Loki connection? What's going on? And then we got the last one. I totally believe this rumor. Channing Tatum finally portraying Gambit. We know that Ryan Reynolds wants it to happen. And we know we're dealing with the multiverse. I'm hoping for Gambit. Don't get me wrong, comic fam. I was just kind of hoping for a fresh casting. I digress because this book is still hot as hell. Take a look at the 9.6 newsstand. I'm going to start you out there, but the 9.2 and the 9.4 are both trending above their 12-month average. You can get a 9.6 newsstand of Wolverine's first solo story, Frank Miller cover, for $400 right now. Looking at the direct market copy, a 7.0 could be purchased for 100 for an increase of 16% when you compare it over the recent 12 months. The 8.0 is up 32%. The 8.5 is up 6%. The 9.0 is up 7%. You can get a 9.4 for 240 bucks, and that's an increase of 27% when you compare it over the recent 12-month average. The 9.6 sold for $300, which is 9% above average, and two copies outperformed. 
The 9.8 selling for 753, 9% above average, and four copies outsold that average this week. You won't believe what Vincent D'Onofrio said at the most recent Comic-Con. At the list at number four, Amazing Spider-Man 50, the first appearance of Kingpin, John Romita seeing your cover, classic, Spider-Man No More. The 1.8 is selling for 380 for an increase of 6%. The 2.5 sold for 500 for an increase of 7%. The 3.0 sold for 595 for an increase of 8%. The 8.5 sold for $5,600, 25% above its 12-month average, and the 9.6 just broke record. It sold for $31,200 back in November of last year. It's up 8%, selling for $33,600. Holy smokes, comic fam. This is a monster sale. There's only 17 copies graded at a 9.6 eight copies graded at a 9.8. And if you're looking for a 9.8 of this book, that's likely gonna clear the $100,000 marker. What's going on with King Ken? Obviously we have some spec here. It's a classic book. We have Vincent D'Onofrio talking a bunch about Spider-Man. Yeah, he was just at Fan Expo Philadelphia, and this is what he had to say regarding Kingpin and Spider-Man. I'm gonna get you one day, Spider-Man. <laughs> we will see, we will see if that happens. There may be a sea of people between us right now, but I'm gonna get you, mother Clearly, Vincent D'Onofrio wants to see this character he portrays beyond the Disney plus Daredevil show, hoping that he'll eventually be on the screen with Tom Holland. What do you think about that? What do you think about him swearing on stage? Such a badass. And what do you think about supporting the show? We've been making this video for over three years straight, Jim. It's actually three years to the day. If you go back and check, the first video we did was July 6, 2020, and we've been doing it every week since. If you want to support what we do, We'll send you some comics every single month. $35 gets you a box of four to five comic books, and some books are guaranteed in every box, like this Peach Momoko Amazing Spider-Man 26 trade dress, The Death of Kamala Khan. We have a key comic going in every single order. ComicTom101.com to join the community. Link in the description. Take a look at this other one per box, Silk number one, Bjorn Berens, and Jem. Hit him with number three. The good thing about having multiple Spider-Man movie franchises is there's a lot of Spider-Man books to spec on. Number three on the list is ASM 78, the first appearance of Hobie Brown as the Prowler. 4.0 going for 140 for an increase of 11%. The 5.5 hit 175 for an increase of 9%. And the 7.0 hit 300 bucks for an increase of 17%. The 8.5 is up 3%, selling for 475. And then a 9.2 sold for $780, 8% above its 12-month average. Although there's been 16 new slabs added to the census since we chatted about this book last week, where it hit number seven on the list, by the way, none of them were in high grade. This is a tough book to secure, really above a 9.0. And because of that, it's trending well. It's selling aggressively in lower grades. And because there's multiple reasons to spec on this book, it's hot. So much going for this book. You've got Uncle Aaron, you got Evil Miles, you got Spider-Punk. Number two on the list, we've got Harry Osborn, ASM 39. It's the first artwork for John Romita, and it's the first time that Peter Parker and Norman Osborn learn each other's identities. I warn the community, there is another giant record-breaking sale, and it's this book. One of the best Green Goblin covers that exists, and a very tough book in high grade. The 2.0 goes for 170, an increase of 2%. The 5.0 hit 550 for an increase of 55%. The 5.5 hit 435, which is up 15%. The 6.0 hit 500, and the 8.5 hit 1500, 5% above its average. I warned the fam about these record-breaking sales. The 9.8 last sold in September for $40,800. Well, this past week, it was obliterated with a 29% increase with a new all-time record-breaking sale of 52800 Hot damn. Now, this is a very tough book in high grade, and this was a gorgeous high grade Silver Age book. Granted, we did have the recent passing of legendary creator John Romita Sr., but this book in that grade is so scarce, it's possible that it would have sold like this regardless. But I could be wrong. I want to know what the community thinks in the comment section below. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think this would have been a huge Spider-Man key either way, especially in a 9.8, but I think we got a little bit of a disagreement on number one. Oh boy, hit the like, slap the subscribe button. You know we're here every week for the comic fam, and yeah, Jem, we disagree about the first appearance of Spidey 2099. And what do we have at the list of number one? You introduce it. I don't want to even touch it. We have the first appearance of Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, not a five-page preview, the first full appearance with him on the cover with that beautiful red foil border. We need to discuss the obvious first gem before we get into it. 
yes, this book was featured in movie. Yes, it features Spidey 2099 prominently on the cover. But for years, ASM 365 outperformed this book. And I never thought I'd see the day where it would be overtaken by a second appearance. I said it. It's a second appearance. This is Incredible Hulk 180 verse 181. Instead of a one panel cameo, you got a five page preview. Spider-Man 2099 is on the cover. It's his first full appearance in story and it should have always been the key issue to get. Outside of a terrible hologram, ASM 365 is a tougher book to get in high grade. It's thicker, it's an anniversary issue, and in its history, outperformed ASM 2099 number one over and over again. Well, I actually had to look up the numbers because Gem and I were getting into it before the show even started. Like, why is ASM 365 not trending higher? Why is it not selling better? I assumed it's because ASM 2099 was not just more attainable, but it was cheaper but that's not the case anymore. What's happening? Well, let's start off with the direct market edition. A CGC 9.0 sold for $60, 33% above its 12 month average. The 9.2 sold 60% higher, and it did that two times. The 9.4 is up 55% and six copies beat that 12 month average, just like the 9.6, which is up 43%, also six copies outperforming. The 9.8 hit 186, which is 26% over its recent 12 month average. When you compare this book to a 98365, it's hitting near the same numbers. It's only a difference of about $50. Some members have secured a 9.8 of 365 for as little as 160 over the last month. Some have paid up to 250. We got some strong performers in the newsstands as well. The 9.4 selling for 101, 55% above average, and the 9.6 selling for 209, which is 69% above average. Now let's compare it to ASM 365. The most recent sale in a CGC 9.8 was $807. Then we've got Spider-Man 2099 issue number one and a 9.8 newsstand selling for 950, outperforming ASM 365. This is crazy, comic fam. I may be disagreeing with Jem, but everyone seemingly disagrees with me because ASM 365 hit heights of $1,700 during the comic boom. Seeing Spidey 2099 outperform a newsstand in this market, considering the heights that book has only reached of $1,100, clearly the investment is pointing into a second appearance or a first appearance in full. I appreciate your time today, comic fam, as always. Geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Now, we have a cool Kickstarter to talk about. I don't bring you Kickstarters often, comic fam. And no, this is not a sponsored ad. Dynamite is just an awesome publishing company, and they're bringing back to press an unpublished work by Stan Lee, one of the last things he ever wrote. And the Kickstarter's already been funded, and you only have a couple days left to back it. Bill Sinkovich is involved, and... It's a stunning comic book. Jem Mint, you've already read it. I did get a chance to read Alliance's Orphans by Stan Lee, Luke Lieberman, and Ryan Silbert. The orphans are the last of their kind. Their planets have each been destroyed by this alien hive, and they're on the search for the inventor's lost inventions. But they find out that those inventions are a little bit more than they seem. Very cool sci-fi stuff from Stan the Man Lee. Legendary creator Bill Sinkovich provided a 16-page prologue as well as a cover for this Kickstarter, which has already reached its goal, and you can still back it by hitting the link in the description. Have a great week. We'll see you soon.